I'm Sandy. And I'm Jed. We are currently exploring the Pacific Northwest. In this video, we're hopping on a ferry and heading over to Friday Harbor and checking out the beautiful San Juan Islands. Good morning. We're going to the San Juan Islands. We might be a little excited. I mean, apparently I am. We are currently at the Anacortes Ferry Terminal waiting on our ferry over to Friday Harbor. Yes, yeah, so we are not gonna be visiting all the islands, but we are going to go spend a couple days on, I don't know if it's the biggest, but probably- One of the bigger. Bigger island. islands. And that's uh, San Juan Island. Where you go in is Friday Harbor. So we're gonna hop on the ferry with the van. We're taking the van across with us and we're gonna explore this beautiful island for the next three days. We've made it aboard our vessel. This time we are on a ship called the Samish and the trip from Anacortes to Friday Island takes about an hour and five minutes. We paid $231 for the crossing. So that's including our van, which is 25 feet long and we are over height as well. So we had to pay extra for that plus the two passengers. So it is a little pricey. So if you're coming over, make sure you plan for like a little extended trip. So it's worth it if you're gonna bring your van. Otherwise they do allow walk-ons and they have like trial and stuff from what we understand there so that may be a better way if you're only planning on visiting for the day. So we have made our way off the ferry and about a 10 minute drive to our accommodation for the night. We're staying at a Harvest Host Lake location called Amaro Farms and this place is absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna take you inside, show you the shop, and then we're going on a sheep tour. I think we need a sheep, honey. No. No, he went a little more. It's small. It'll fit in the van. He said, I'm doing it. Being attacked. I'm being attacked. I don't think he's happy I'm holding. Is it a girl or a boy? I can't see because you're trying to bite my hand off. So the wool on the head is like, nope. Good morning, everyone. So we slept really well at our Harvest Host location last night, and we are prepared for a full day of exploring here on San Juan Island. First stop is the Lime Kiln State Park. So this park apparently has a lighthouse that we're gonna go see, but it is a very, very popular spot for whale watching here on the island. Not sure if we're gonna see any whales today, but fingers crossed, we'll see one or Please. 50. I really, really wanna see a whale. Right here we have Douglas, last name Fur. And here we have Big Leaf, last name Maple. No. no. Maple, first name, like a girl, last name Big Leaf? No. That's all I got. So we made it down to this little wildlife viewing area and we are currently not viewing wildlife. That's about par for the course. They do have a lot of informational signs on the wildlife and the kind of wildlife and the geography and the surrounding area. Actually, right behind us is Victoria, British Columbia in Canada. It's really, really close. We could probably like swim over there. Well, if Jed can swim, I'll watch. That's the only time I would probably see a killer whale. <laughs> that that would be my luck. Like I'd out be out there in the middle of the water. I'd be swimming and be like, yeah, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And all of a sudden, like, oh, look, it's Free Willy. And then things yeah. would be really bad. However, one of the things that we did read up front is that there is actually no recorded attack of of a killer whale on a human being in their natural habitat anyway and i don't want to be the first Here we are at the Lime Killed Lighthouse. It's one of the more popular tourist attractions here on the island. Well, I say tourist attractions. It's still a navigational aid that's used to this very day. 
But in front of the lighthouse, they actually have a little placard which tells you the last time they saw a whale and it was the 29th. I don't know what day you're gonna be seeing this, but it's not the 29th and we still don't see any whales. But just with the naked eye, it can be hard to spot the orcas. So they have this really cool listening station so you can listen to see if there's any whale calls. So, I mean, if you hear the whale calls, then you know that, hey, there's whales in areas and it, it's probably worth sticking around to see if you can't see a couple, but today there's nothing but static. According to the sign, you can also hear boats. You can even hear rain when it's raining. So that's, that's pretty neat. That'd be kind of cool to listen to. Okay, so no whales, but we are back in the van about to have some lunch. So we're, we're actually eating pre-packaged whale that Sandy picked up. Mm -hmm. Nothing like a good pre-packaged whale. You shouldn't eat whales. So we shouldn't even talk about it. So our next stop today is Palindaba Lavender Farm, and this place is absolutely beautiful. We are loving all the lavender farms that we've been able to visit up here in the Pacific Northwest. Just incredible. It, it just always smells so amazing. Yeah, they, they, the whole air is just filled with just, lavender. It just, it, it's so calming and it just smells so good. But let's go inside and check out the store and maybe walk around the lavender fields for a bit. Because why not? Because we're here and it's beautiful and it's purple. <laughs> What is that? Um, it's uh, a lavender black tea and it smells absolutely amazing. Let me just tell you, this store is incredible. This is one of the most impressive lavender stores that we've been in on this entire trip. They do have lots of stores kind of all over the country as well in several locations, so they are a pretty big operation. But wow, it just, it's so beautiful in here. So over here, they actually have items that are made with edible lavender. They have organic lavender honey, lavender bittersweet chocolate sauce, lavender peach chutney, and lavender berry chutney. We are going to try the organic lavender honey. That's delicious. That is absolutely delicious. You can really taste the lavender in there and it tastes amazing. We just came out of the main lavender store and walked over to the lavender fields. We picked up a couple of things. Sandy got an aroma therapy bracelet and we got lavender infused shortbread cookies. You wanna try one? Yeah, let's try it. So the, there's two, they have two different flavors. One is a chocolate chip lavender. We'll start with that. Wow, that's like a big hit of lavender right away. It's I'm delicious actually. Out there a little bit. That's really good. I really like lavender like in a culinary sense. I think it has like a really great flavor to it. That's really good. And then the other flavor they have is just a shortbread. Maybe we should have done the shortbread first. You can see the little pieces of lavender in it. Mm -hmm. That's are, a good shortbread cookie. It is really good. These are delicious. Come here and get you a bunch of cookies. They also have a little store out here in the middle of the fields and they have all kinds of displays showing what they do with lavender, how they cultivate it, how they dry it. And they also have lavender ice cream here as well. So I am so excited about this next place. Holy cow, <laughs> she's really excited about this next place. I love alpacas. So we are at Crystal Acres Alpaca Farm and they have tons of alpacas. I can see them right over there and they have an alpaca store so we're going to check it out. Hopefully walk around the fields, meet an alpaca or two or five, ten, twenty, thirty. Lots of alpacas. I'm excited. So the little store inside was really cute. They had all kinds of little stuffed animals and socks and t-shirts and pretty much anything that you could want alpaca. Really the stars of the shows are these cute little guys. It seems that they've only got one baby here. So babies are called Kriyas and the lady at the desk told us that they actually have 59 alpacas with the most recent being born. And that's a lot of alpacas.
Hey, I'll pack of the van and let's head to our accommodations for the night. We're not going there yet. We're going somewhere else first. <sighs> I guess I wasted a perfectly good alpaca joke. No, you can still keep it. You can pack it. They'll, they'll know. Wow, so we're really all over the place today. We drove straight from the alpaca farm to Roche Harbor. They have the San Juan Island Sculpture Park. It's over 20 acres and they have over 150 sculptures. So there's a lot to see, so let's get to it. So they even have some interactive artwork out here. This thing is a pretty cool little contraption and you can actually turn it and it moves. You can do it faster than that. Come on. People want to show. Give the people what they want. Give you a show. It really doesn't go very fast at all. Okay, so I think we got the quite to work out today. It's only like 73 out but for some reason feels hot. odd yeah we must say this is a really cool little sculpture park and there's lots of cool sculptures to see and plenty of walking to do around here we only covered a small portion of it but there's beautiful beautiful sculptures and i think it's well worth coming to see while you're over here if you have the time they do recommend a five dollar donation but if you want to buy these sculptures we saw for sale signs on some of them they look to be ranging around 35 to sixty thousand dollars so yeah. so maybe you won't have to donate that five dollars if you buy one yeah just pick you one up that's fine Our second night here on the island, we stayed at the San Juan County Fairgrounds. They have a very small campground here with, I think it's either eight or 10 sites. But it has showers, it has a bathhouse, and plenty of space. The thing about this island is there's actually not a whole lot of campgrounds and stuff here. There's this one here, and I think there's another small county park where they have some sites that you can stay at. And then there's, of course, the Harvest Host that we stayed at. But otherwise, there's not a lot of places if you're staying in your van or in your RV. So be sure to prepare for that. And while we're talking about preparing for coming over here, make sure that you make reservations for the ferry in both directions. When you pay for your ticket to come out here, it's one, it's a round trip ticket. You pay it, it when you leave Anacortes and then you come out here and then you can get back on the ferry for free so save your receipt but you do have to make a reservation especially if you're in a bigger vehicle if not you're going to end up here forever stuck. it's not a bad thing i don't think it's a pretty cool island <laughs> all right so we only have a few more hours left here on the island so we got to get going So since we were able to explore most of the island yesterday, we're actually going to explore the little town of Friday Harbor today. Friday Harbor is the town on the island. I mean, I guess it begs to be explored. And it's really, really super cute. I love it. It's a beautiful little town. The marina area is beautiful. It's just gorgeous. But we're gonna start our exploration off with, what are we doing, Jed? We're going to the Whale Museum. You know the things that we didn't see at that state park? Yeah, maybe we'll see some in here, or maybe we won't, I don't know. And Kyle from Red, White, and Bethune said, if we don't call it a whale of a museum, he's not watching this video. So there you go, Kyle, watch the video. Let's go, we're about to have a whale of a good time. Yeah. We just arrived to the new exhibit. They have a life-size model of a whale called, I don't know whether it's Sook or Sookie, it's S-O-O-K-E, but she passed away when she was three years old. It doesn't say cause of death or what happened to her, but they do have a life-size model and they have her actual skeleton. While the death of this whale is sad, it does give researchers a lot of insight in studying these whales with the ultimate goal of conservation and preserving the environment so that these whales thrive. Orcas are not the only kind of whales that you can see here. They have humpback whales, they have gray whales, they have mink whales, and there's also a couple of different species of porpoises that also frequent these waters. Sadie, did you find something interesting? I mean, I guess so. <laughs> it's, it's the nurse in me, but they have a 27 foot long tapeworm here that was found in one of the porpoises. It's crazy. That's, that's a big tapeworm. 
The whale museum was absolutely worth it. Pretty cool. If you want to learn about whales or different ways you can see whales while you're on this island, it's definitely a great resource. But unfortunately, we only have mere hours left on the island. So we're going to walk around the town and just kind of do a little bit of exploring, see what we can see. Okay, so a little bit of breaking news. We're supposed to be on a ferry at 6.30 back to Anacortes tonight. However, we just got a text saying our ferry was canceled due to lack of crew. So I'm thinking that we may recruit these guys over here. Jen and Kyle's kids, see if- uh, I drove a boat. So, oh, oh, you've driven a boat? Sweet. Awesome, well, problem solved. Actually, we're making a beeline down to the ferry office to see what our options are. It was hard enough to get reservations for the night, so. I don't know. We'll we'll see what comes of this. Sandy's busy trying to rebook a ferry to get us off the island. There's not anything ready for the rest of the day, nor is there anything tomorrow. There is tomorrow? Okay, so tomorrow there is a ferry. So they're trying to book that right now. In the meantime, we saw some really cute raccoons. They apparently live under the pier. It looks like there's probably about three or four of them. I mean, it's adorable. Well, good news. So the fairgrounds that we stayed at last night, Jen contacted them and they said they could accommodate both of our vans, which is a sigh of relief. So we know where we're staying for the night. And we also have a ferry rebooked for 340, 345, something like that. So the good news is it gives us a little bit more time to explore around town. So we ended up having a really good night's sleep again at the fairgrounds last night. They were so nice to help us find a place to stay for the evening since we were kind of stranded over here. So big thank you to them for helping us out. We're looking at the cat. She's really cute. Yeah, she's being... I don't know if you can see her. She's being super adorable right now. <laughs> we're in line waiting for the ferry. So far, no cancellation, so fingers crossed. But it is late, but we have confirmed that yes, in fact. It's coming. It is coming, so. So, so at least um, we should get back to the mainland, fingers crossed, we do get, get back. If we don't, then you won't see this video and you'll just never know that we were even stuck. I guess you'll see it on the news. <laughs> yeah, I mean. maybe on the news, I don't know. But we had a, actually had a really great time here. The island is beautiful. If you can make it out here, I highly suggest that you do that. Eat you some food here because even though we didn't put it in this video, I'm gonna tell you right now, we ate at this place called Downriggers and it was absolutely delicious. If you watch our long form videos, be sure to look out for a short form video on this because you will see some short form videos that we're gonna put out on our different social media channels about the restaurant experiences. The food over here was very good. The whole experience minus the last minute canceled ferry <laughs> was really, really great. But that's something to keep in mind if you, if and when you do come to the island is that, you know, stuff happens. So just kind of be prepared, be flexible. So if you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe subscribe button, hit that notifications bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. And, and until the next video, stay, stay wonderful. wonderful.